Nara wenye umbo la mawimbi ama wimbi la bahari uliojengwa kwa kutumia chupa za plastiki umezinduliwa mjini Diani katika kaunti ya Kwale. Munara huu umetundikwa katikati mwa muji wa Diani ili kutoa hamasa kwa wakazi na watalii wanaozuru eneo hili dhidi ya kutupa plastiki kiholela. Ukiwa na umbo la wimbi la bahari munara huu unaashiria kuwa viumbe vya baharini huathirika pakubwa kutokana na plastiki zinazotupwa mijini na kuishia baharini. I'm Jean Shen. I'm an artist from New York. We're here in Diani to celebrate the opening of my public sculpture called Sea Change. And here at Kenya, this beautiful coast, um, but the plastic waste that goes into the ocean is harming the environment, is harming the marine habitat, and ultimately harming the community as well. 450 years is the life of a plastic. So it will be here before us, after us, and we're using them as if it just lives in our environment, but it will become the environment for sure. I create monumental, site-specific installations using accumulations of everyday objects, usually sourcing consumer waste through community participation. My work invites the public to witness and confront social challenges and ecological harm. We're connected by water, and I wanted to make this big wave. It's like a tsunami wave ready to crash on us. And ultimately, if we don't solve the plastic pollution crisis, that sea, that wave, that ocean that will be crashing on us will be the plastic debris. And I wanted to make that problem visible. When I arrived, it was an African blessing, meaning it was pouring rain. Despite the obstacles of heavy rain and flooding, when I finally met the participants, they were so welcoming, embracing me with excitement, curiosity, and open arms. Asante! The team! Nice to meet you! Welcome! <laughs> Thank you so much! Hi, Hello! Team. Mesha. Mesha. Would you mind seeing the rest? Yes, I want to see everything. Thank you so much! Uh, zip these tight yeah. as lock. Yeah. A little bit tighter. Little that would tight. be great. Yeah, yeah. It's a big wave. <laughs> um, it's much bigger than I anticipated. Uh, so it's taking a little bit longer, you know. And of course the rain doesn't help, but it's happening. So I'm just grateful. Well, I work often very site specifically. So I come to a site as a visitor and I have ambassadors who are my partners, collaborators. And then they, we talk about what are the issues that concern us? What are the issues that we want to do better? And so art is one of those tools to change the world, right? To be a catalyst. So the thing is, how do we come together to create an amazing, like large scale public work? But that's not the end result. It's the process. It's the friendship. Like May, it's meeting you all, right? That is really the, the the driving force of the work. The next day, when the sun came out, we took inventory of how much plastics were prepared and ready for the installation that week. This collection of waste was overwhelming, so powerful and yet so beautiful to see it brought us together. Well, the project um, is in partnership with Harry Kenya. And we've been here working and planning for so long, years with my collaborator and partner, Desiree Lebeau, a professor from Stanford University. For a long time in my lab, I always dreamed of somehow pairing science and art. I just think that the two are beautiful complements to one another. Jean told me she was really into labor-intensive art. <laughs> now I know what that means. <laughs> It has been a great um, experience. As you can see, we've been able to bring on board so many community representatives, community groups that we've partnered with um, to create, uh, to collect the plastics first, to clean them, to cut them, and uh, zip them together to prepare the sheets for the um, sea change uh, sculpture. Again, I'm a physician, and so I care very much about the link between health of the environment and health of the people. Um, we know that plastic waste is the number one area 
where disease-causing mosquitoes breed. We're bringing awareness here, but what we're actually doing is convening a lot of key stakeholders. The national government, county government, the municipality, the local businesses, the community members, other NGOs, to come together, create and co-create innovative solutions to tackle all of the environmental health challenges that are here in Diani, Kenya. And we're coming up with a plan as we're in the sweltering heat here. Melting. <laughs> it's hot. It's hot. <laughs> it's true that if we want to save the planet, it's the industries, the large petroleum-based extractive industries and policymakers that need to make this change. But also, change happens through hands-on experience. If we can mobilize to create this monumental sculpture together in such a short time, we can come together with communities to do other things with a shared goal. As a resident and as a son of this uh, town, um, I'm glad to see that action is being taken. You know, they say better late uh, than never, but never late is better. But uh, we are doing it now and that is that uh, what actually matters the most. Money that will go into it is not for the material, it's for the labor, it's for the care. Right? And that is the connection that we want to have as opposed to thinking about art as a pretty picture. You know, I make things that are often invisible, very, very visible. So the plastic problem here is everywhere, but you see it together in a sculpture. You see it together as a wave, and then it has that impact. This sculpture is going to sit there and be a reminder to all of us about our individual actions and the fact that we should stop using single-use plastics at all means. This kind of work is very intentional and takes patience. It's not all or nothing, winner takes all mentality, seeking quick and easy solutions. It's investing in people, intergenerational change, integrating small changes toward long-term solutions that can navigate our complex lives, including our dependency on plastics and eliminating plastic pollution now.